Juve plan reshuffle with insane swap deal. Conte to leave Inter, French star wants PSG switch, a transfer roundup, and today's great debate all coming up in the next few minutes. As I am your host, Matt Frolik, you are the one footballers, and this is the Daily News. So first off, and Juventus are planning quite a lot of business this summer. One potential transfer includes an insane swap deal, and that could be Alvaro Morata joining Juventus on a permanent basis, and Paolo Dybala going in the other way to Atletico Madrid. Now, the whole reason behind this is that Juventus apparently need a little bit of money this summer. That is why they were eager to sell Cristiano Ronaldo, potentially a few others, to try and recoup some of the money that they've lost during the pandemic. So, with Alvaro Morata on a loan deal, and with them not able to cover the fees for a second loan deal, or to bring him permanently, they're looking at the possibility of swapping Paolo Dybala. This would, of course, be an insane swap deal. The reason being is because Paolo Dybala, despite the fact he's had loads of injury worries, is still an insane player. It would also be crazy that, from a technical level, Dybala, I think, is better than Alvaro Morata. So to let him go would just be nuts. But then when you look at Juventus, how Dybala fits in, how Morata fits in, and how well he's done, it actually kind of makes sense. On the flip side to all of this, I'm not sure where Dybala would fit in at Atletico Madrid. The way they play doesn't necessarily allow them too many out-and-out -out attackers on the pitch. And with the child Felix and Luis Suarez at the club, doesn't look like Dybala would be a given starter. Surely at this point in his career, if he's going to manage to stay fit, he's going to want to go somewhere where he's going to get a lot of game time. As for Morata, he's made it clear that he wants to stay at the club. He's done very well to score a lot of goals this season. There doesn't look like a reunion between him and Diego Simeone seems to be on the cards. So him staying at Juventus seems to be like the right deal. But on top of all of this, Juve may be able to make money another way. And that is by selling Matthijs de Ligt. Apparently the Dutch defender is... Not really regretting moving to Juve a couple of years ago, but certainly still has Barcelona in his career plan and wants to join fellow Dutchman Frankie de Jong at the Nou Camp. Of course, Barcelona bringing in players has a whole nother story to it because they also need quite a bit of money at the moment and it looks like they're trying to make some free transfers with the likes of Wijnaldum, Depay and Sergio Aguero all expected to join within the next few days. But actually, talking of Italian clubs who need some money, one of them is Inter Milan and so bad is the situation that Antonio Conte could reportedly leave the club within the next few days. Just a couple of weeks after taking Inter Milan to the title, he's had another riff of the board. And this one concerns the fact that they are far more interested in selling and making up 70 to 80 million euros in the transfer market. And Antonio Conte wanting to buy more players, to keep his stars, to challenge again, not only in Syria, but in Europe as well. Of course, they completely and utterly destroyed Syria this season with some fantastic results. But the Champions League hasn't exactly brought them much promise in the last two seasons. So Conte needs a few more players and not really the free or cheaper alternatives that he's been used to bring in in the last few seasons. Of course, you can see the effect that big money signings like Romelu Lukaku had on the team. 75 million was splashed out and well, he did a fantastic job at leading them to the title. So the fact that Inter wants to get rid of a few key players and make up a lot of money doesn't exactly sit so well with Conte and you can expect that he could potentially leave the club, like I mentioned, probably within the next 72 hours. There's so much news coming out every single minute on this deal. And who knows where Antonio Conte is possibly going to end up next. If Zindin Zidane is to leave Real Madrid, maybe Conte can end up there. Maybe he's going to fight it out with a leg we just go there. Who knows? But moving up next, and to a bit more transfer news and talking of another massive club in PSG. And they're going to have to spend a lot of money if they're to bring in midfielder Eduardo Camavinga. That is according to his club, Ren, who despite the fact that he's only got one year left on his contract, are asking for 100 million euros. They're probably doing it because they know he's their main star and because they know PSG can't afford it. The youngster has refused to sign a new contract which runs out next summer. So you would think, like with the rest of the footballing world, when a deal is only running out in one year, a club would accept a lesser fee because they don't want to lose him for free. But no, Ren are like, screw it. We want the 100 million. We've developed this kid. We want the money that is definitely going to be worth it. And that keeps the club alive for quite a few years. Are PSG going to pay it though? Having looked at PSG's recent transfer business in the midfield area, they bought an Adrissa Gay for not so much money. They've also bought in Paredes, again, not a huge amount. And the Herrera was on a free. They've got Marco Verratti there. It doesn't really go along with what they've been doing in the midfield, but. Having said that, despite the fact that like we mentioned Hammerfinger's only got one year left and they could get someone else for cheaper, 100 million for an insane talent who's been linked with so many clubs and could be in this PSG midfield for the next however many years, 
maybe it represents a good deal. I'm not going to say definitely because it's still a ridiculous figure. In fact, the only other player to go for more than 100 million with just a year left on his contract was Aiden Hazard to Real Madrid from Chelsea. And at the moment, it looks like he could be leaving the club. So that didn't exactly work out so well. As for Camavinga, though, we all know he's a quality talent. And I'm sure he'll go on to be worth it in the future. Next up, then, a quick round up of the rest of today's transfer news that you might have missed. And William wants to return to Chelsea after just one season at Arsenal. Fernando Torres has said he is coming out of retirement at the age of 37 and will update everybody on his new club within the next few days. UEFA have opened disciplinary proceedings against Barcelona, Juventus and Real Madrid because of their desire to enter the European Super League. And lastly but not least, some stunning news. There are some reports that Gareth Bale, after saying that his future will cause chaos if he were to announce it now, is going to get out of his Real Madrid contract, with it being terminated in the summer, take a cut of his salary for the final year, and then retire from football after the European Championships with Wales. Of course, this is just a rumour at the moment, but this would be absolutely stunning. Finally then, we come to this week's great debate. This is a slightly unofficial one this week as it's me putting the question to all of you in the comments section, but I want to know who are going to be your winners for the Europa League and the Champions League final. Of course, two of the biggest games in the footballing calendar starting tonight with Manchester United against Villarreal and I'm going to go for a 2-0 win for Manchester United. I've been very impressed with them and very, very impressed with Villarreal through the European competition. I just think that the experience and level of quality throughout the Manchester United team is going to be enough to see them over the finish line and see them pick up the trophy for the second time in four years. So a 2-0 victory to Manchester United. But with the Champions League final, I can't choose. You know, every time Chelsea have been written off the season, they've come through it very well. Manchester City, it looks like after such a strong end to the season, it's written in the stars for them to pick up their first Champions League trophy and the first for Guardiola in 10 years. Oh, it's so difficult to choose between the two. So much so, in fact, that I don't know who's going to win it. I just think it's going to go to extra time. Both teams have got very good defences and very strong in attack. And I'm sure it's going to be quite a cagey match. So, yeah, I'm going to go for Manchester City, Chelsea to go into extra time. And one of those teams to win it 1-0. So, there you have it then. That is all from me for today. Let me know your thoughts on the great debate down below. Check out everything else we've got going on. And until next time, I will see you guys later.